I am Ann Rice and I am a geek, absolutely a geek. <laughs> Congratulations on the upcoming release of your new book, Prince Lestat. That's got to be exciting for you. It is exciting. It really is. I'm very happy to have another Lestat novel coming out. Very happy. Yeah, it's it's been a few years since uh, we visited the Vampire Chronicles, and uh, yeah. So, yeah. was that? Have you been waiting on on to tell this story, or waiting for the time to be right, or how, what was that whole process for you? I was waiting for a story. I didn't for a long time. I didn't have anything new to say with Lestat. You know, I associated him in my mind with some of the darkest periods of my life, and um, I think it took me a, a while to find something new. And I, I think, it, in retrospect, it was very good to lay off of the Chronicles for a while. And when I decided to go back, when I uh, sat down and actually started reading the books all over again, I had a million new things to say and a, a million new questions and a million new things I wanted to do with him. So the delay worked out really well for me, I, I think. You know, we'll find out when the book comes out. If people hate it, <laughs> they'll, they'll have their own opinion. You know? Right. Yeah, that's one of the things, too, is like when people are anticipating a novel, that's one of the things you have to combat. You know, it's, it's, there's this, this waiting and waiting and waiting. Yeah. How is that going to play out? So I'm sure it'll be great. Um, uh, matter of fact, uh, the Interview with the Vampire was actually the first... Um, real adult book that I read at a young age and um, I thought it was interesting because um, now with things like Twilight um, you know these these uh, or, or the mortal instruments you know there's a lot of of, of uh, young adult novels out there and when I was a kid there wasn't really anything like that yeah. and um, Goosebumps, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. E exactly so uh, how do you how do you what's your take on 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 here it is 2014 and how kids look at vampires today like with twilight for example with their, their sparkly they're still beautiful like in your in your novels but you know now they can go out in the sun they don't always kill people they're kind of vegetarian what do you think about that whole concept well I, I tell you what always interested me was the heroic dimension of the vampire the romantic dimension i mean my characters um what I explore is how unique they are and how powerful and how lonely and how marginalized. But these other writers, Stephanie Meyer and Charlene Harris and others, what they're doing to a large extent is domesticating the vampire. You know, they're saying, okay, yes, he's, he's a, an immortal and a, and a blood drinker, but he could be the boy next door. He's the guy next to you in biology class. He's a bunch of vegetarians living in the woods of a small town, you know, that type of thing. And Charlene Harris is wonderful at that, you know, saying vampires are these southern guys who hang out at Sam Merlot's uh, bar in Bonton, Louisiana. It's the very opposite of what I wanted to do. So in a way, I love it because it doesn't threaten me in any way. It's, it's so different from what I do that I can enjoy watching True Blood every week. You know, I think it's great. I, it doesn't impinge on, on what interests me. I'm much more interested in Lestat and Louis and Armand, my characters, as heroes, tragic heroes that are truly immortal, you know, guys who are walking into um, a movie theater and just weeping when they see the sun on the screen, you know, because they haven't, you know, they live two, three hundred years without ever seeing the sun, period. Or, or t I like to talk, say, about an immortal who's 5,000 years old walking through the cities of today and marveling at what electric light has done to people's spirit and people's tempo. You know, things like that. That's what interests me. And, of course, the other vampire writers, are, as far as I know, don't go there. So, now, you know, I, I like what they do. <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of, like, teen angst. You know, there's no real like sex per se it's you know hugging or cuddling this forbidden fruit that must be tasted but not really kind of thing yeah well there's always been a tremendously sexual dimension to every vampire i mean the whole nature of drinking blood is very sexual and sensual and and i think vampire has always been somebody that you felt you could fall in love with and that you could make love you you know, I used to get mail from teenage girls who said, everyone in our school thinks Lestat is going to come and save them. And I thought, Lestat, this ruthless killer I created? What would, make, what would make you think that you would be safe from him if he 
did that. But of course, we all think we'd be safe. You know, I, I think if Lestat, if any vampire walked in the door, I'd be able to talk to him and say, look, I really understand all about you. You're not going to hurt me. And that's what I see in Twilight a lot, is that idea of, of the young girl protagonist being this powerful immortal, but he's never going to hurt her. The opposite is going to protect her against everybody else. So that's very sexy. Right. Let's um I want to talk a little bit about this this digital era that we're in, you know. I personally am a fan of books. You know, I love having a collection of books. Even if I'm not going to read it right away, I just want to buy it now as a book and just save it for later. But now everyone can, you know, look on their on their tablets or their phones and they can read. Have have you made that push to a digital era or do you, are you still a lover of of the hard copies? I'm all for the digital book and I do have every incarnation of the iPad and the Kindle <laughs> and the Nook and I still buy books. My whole house is so crowded with books that every few days, my assistant back has to come in and cart out boxes of books and take them over to our storage place because I just have new books coming in all the time. So I'm for it, but I haven't made the adjustment yet. You know, I, I love to put little sticky notes all over my books. I love to write in them. Uh, I found a bookstore in, in uh, Washington, I think it is. It's Powell's Books that will buy old copies of my, my research material with all the notes scribbled all over it. You know, instead of that stuff getting thrown out, now it can have a new life with somebody through Powell's Books. Um, but I'm still in favor of it, though. I think the digital revolution is fabulous. I know people, um, I know people who are reading again that had given up reading because of eye problems or... Um, I just didn't find it comfortable and suddenly they've got a nook and they can adjust the font to huge and they can get the light exactly the backlight of the page just the way they like it and they're reading for pleasure again that's just one dimension of the revolution that's just one aspect and then think of all the travelers who are um you know traveling on a plane i'm carrying maybe one jack reacher novel that's that thick and weighs about two pounds you know and somebody else has got a kindle completely loaded with five or six novels that they can read yeah. That's great. I mean, that's not going to stop. It's, you know. It's always moving forward, I guess, yeah, with technology. You know what it is? If people love to read and they're going to go on reading, and the digital re revolution is not hurting books, it's just finding a new audience and new ways to read books. Eventually, um, I think that when people publish digital books and digital books alone, they're going to figure a way to press a button at the end so you can order the hard copy for your shelf, and a lot of people are going to do that.